Okay, so today, which is Tuesday, the 28th of April, Veeam released their Veeam backup for Azure. So what that means is that gives us the ability with the version one product to protect our Azure virtual machines, uh, recover them, obviously, be very granular in, in terms of recovery as well, but also gives us the ability to bring it back to a Veeam backup replication system. So. What I want to do in this video is really quickly highlight some of those so some of those features, how simple it looks, and yeah, really just have a look at the the new product. So, on the screen here, you'll see that I've got two things that represent uh, Veeam Backup for Azure. So the top one is the actual appliance. This is where all the management and the configuration happens, and this VBA hyphen with the long UUID is one of our workers. I'll get onto what those workers are, but if you're familiar with Veeam, think of them as kind of like a proxy. This is what's gonna move data from here, there, and everywhere. Um, what you'll find is these will be situated in each location that you require. You don't have to deploy them. The appliance will do that for you, and this is really gonna take, take care of that. But So I've got it all set up and it's already running, but if we go into create a resource, have a search in here, you'll see all of the different Veeam stuff that, you'll, that you've that you got available, but in particular, this is the new product, Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure Free Edition. So again, it gives you a bit of a description of what that looks like, some of the plans from that. But if we run through, and I found this super, super simple to, to really run through. So first of all, pick your, your subscription, pick a resource group that you'd like to push that into. I'm going to choose this because I think it will moan that I've already got one created. Um, let me just try and do something like that as well. So I'm going to create something called VBA Azure, or let's call it VB Azure, in the region of the UK South. We could then start to say how redundant do we want to want to make it, just for the free edition, just for demo purposes. I want to just quickly run through these. What size do we want? If you've you can obviously change what that needs to be and what authentication type. I'm gonna use just a, this is really just to get through the wizard as we've already got it created. Next up is our disks. So again, we want it to run on the, the fastest disk possible from, from an OS point of view, but you could, you've got a decision to make there. What network would you like it to, to run on? What, IP, uh, what subnet, what public IP would you like it to take from a pool? Um, and network security group, all of those settings. Generally, if you've already got a, a resource group, a virtual network, network interface, etc., already set up, then this should just be available in the, in the dropdown. Um, monitoring whether you want to monitor things like boot, etc., whether you want this enable auto shutdown. I think this is pretty cool within within Azure. So as far as I'm aware is that when this is not running or when this appliance is not running or any virtual machine that is powered off or deallocated, it means that we're not having to spend money on it other than the storage potentially. To have this enable auto shutdown, so it only comes on as and when you really need to start um, performing those those backups or those orchestrated snapshots then I think that's a pretty good, cool feature to have have on. But again, you can turn that off. Advanced is whether you want to use specific host groups, VM generation, Gen 1 or Gen 2, any particular tags that you want. And I'll show you not so much around when we create this virtual machine, but when you when you are create, creating your virtual machines day-to-day -day within, within Azure, what the value is of, of actually using these tag based systems because we can leverage that with a with Veeam backup for Azure as well. So what that'll do is that will then give us that and allow us to then go and go and create that. Now I've already created it so I don't want to waste time and and go and create another one in a different region because ultimately you only need one. So if you've got multiple regions that you're you've got workloads within and you need to protect, you still only need one Veeam backup for for Azure instance that will allow you to protect all of your regions and across region as well. So while that's thinking about what it's doing, I'm going to jump into 
so the forward facing IP and don't worry this will be gone by the time although I've authenticated against it but this this forward facing IP will be will be gone and what you'll see in fact once that does finish I'll show you that I've got I've only got two instances and I've actually used the Veeam backup for Veeam backup and replication direct restore to Microsoft Azure with these two machines it's another experiment that I'm running through whether going from on-premises storage is faster than going from cloud tier and that cloud tier is using Microsoft Azure blob storage so some more things to come uh, later on around that so when you first come in here you've got three things that you have to do before you can do anything else first of all we have to add a Microsoft Azure connection so that will be to your Azure subscription and to your storage accounts then we're going to look at our review or our workers so if we've got workers if we require workers in both East US, US2, UK South etc we can come in here and we can add them and they can be ad hoc you can come in here at any point and and start adding what they need to look at and how many and they'll load balance across the workload that you put in as well so they're pretty pretty dynamic in that in that front and you can see here that if you remember back when I showed you the instances that I did have already then you'll see that that was the that was the VBA hyphen long UUID I only got have that one one instance back to that configuration and again you can come back in here anytime you'll notice that I can only have that one um, or I've, I've already added that so it's not allowing me to go back in there but these ones you can absolutely add so again for um, for longer term retention where we want to leverage Azure blob storage then we want to create a, a repository now you could in theory have one repository that sat in one region or you might have a, a repository in each region depending on what your resource and what your your um, recovery time was as well from that so and then the final thing is creating your first policy and i'll get to that that shortly so what i've done here is i've added my my veeam my azure account my subscription we can see different add like we can get role-based access as well here if we wanted to add additional users that we wanted to add in here we've got our repositories that I've just shown you and we can go in here and we can add additional repositories and you can have multiple repositories in the same region as well these are these are our workers we've got our server settings things like retention things like certificates email settings for notifications and what our our system looks like from a backup point of view obviously if we want to be able to back up ourselves. In terms of this appliance then we can trigger that here licensing so i'm using the free license this will give us access to two instances fully functional within with 10 instances in total but there is another two two license models um appearing um later on down the line as well if we come out of that configuration now you've got this overview and i've already created a policy so first thing to do is have a look at that policy if we go in here we can go just edit so I'm going to give it a name so I'm going to protect all of my VMs or some of my VMs that I store in Azure US East simply because that's where our lab is and that's where I want to be able to protect that next up is well what Active Directory are you using if you're using that what regions do we want to take resources from or back up from specify those resources now this is the interesting bit we could just say all resources and that will take everything from my my um, azure account and protect those or we can be really granular and we could be granular in terms of choosing virtual machine we could use those tags that i first mentioned we could use restore, restore groups or we could use specific subscriptions so in particular on this um on this region i have two um subscriptions that I use so I could choose to to protect the whole of, of one of those subscriptions as well if I if I so wished we can also exclude so if you if you could imagine if we're going to take a whole resource group there might be some things in there that you want to exclude from a from a virtual machine point of view then there's two elements of protection so one is the using an, a, the VM snapshot and this will give us a number of really fast recovery points to be able to roll back to really fast but then we've also got the backup settings which is going to push everything down into 
object storage or, or Microsoft Azure blob storage. So you can see here, but both of them are optional. So we could choose to create a policy that only has snapshots or only has backups or has both like I have here. So they run pretty much in line with each other straight after each other. And I'll get onto what that looks like. Um, also a pretty cool feature is, well, if we're gonna back up stuff, then let's understand or at least have a good assumption on what it's gonna cost overall for the amount of time that we're gonna keep it. So things like, having a cost optimization or cost estimate estimation is is pretty key and important there uh, or just a little bit of an insight into what that could cost uh, and then a typical schedule that you've already set on the snapshot and backup how many times do we want to retry that if something fails notification wise i want an email or i want something to be sent to my email address when things are good when we've got a warning or whether we've got a failure Bit of a summary on that we can export that as a template so you can use that over and over again very fast and off that goes that that starts protecting that and i started this yesterday so you'll see here that on both of those machines i have two restore points i have a snapshot but i also have a um a copy of that data in azure blob storage so if i now jump over to my lab which is in us east but not in azure you'll see that I've got my Veeam backup replication environment. And this just completes that circle in that if we go to external repositories, now I've already created one, but if I go add external repository, here you're gonna see this Veeam backup for Microsoft Azure. And I believe this came in in version 10. So what that allows us to do is add in a name, give our storage credentials to our Azure subscription, where it is, what our gateway server is, which container we're talking to, i.e. which one is Veeam backup for AWS, uh, sorry, Veeam backup for Azure writing to. So in this instance, it's v, VB Azure. And if we just quickly jump back onto uh, configuration repositories and into here, you'll see that that is the container that we're using. Jumping back into my lab, there's a folder within there. Again, if I went back, you'd see that folder underneath as well, applied to that. Now the interesting bit here is that, so you saw that I protected that one machine or two machines into this say, into this external repository or into that, that object storage or into that Azure blob storage. So if we now jump back up to home, under hit under so under home you've got your jobs and you've got your backups if we go into our external repository and we choose that azure east you're going to see those two machines that we've protected now to go one step further to here we can use this to recover our machines and we can instantly recover those to vSphere and hyper-v we could if we choose to we can directly restore that back into Amazon EC2, we could put it back into Azure, depending on where this Veeam backup and replication server was, because obviously that'd be pretty pointless because unless you were gonna put it into a different account and in which case um, you probably have the VBR server up in Azure. But ultimately this, this, this backup is sat in Microsoft Azure blob storage, but we can stream that down, we can do individual um, guest files um, recovery as well on top of that and this is the big question that I had this morning while, whilst talking about this was okay so that's all of my data in Azure what if I wanted a copy of that data somewhere else so we could absolutely achieve that by if we create a backup copy job we can take that that backup copy job let's just go through that again Azure IaaS you see here, we can then give it a name. We can say, when do you want it to happen? We can then choose that backup job that we, we have. We can be granular about what we what we want to add, or we can just choose the whole, the whole job. We could then say, where do you want it to be stored? And this case is, well, do you want it to go on premises? Do you want it to go to potentially to a service provider? Do you want it to go to just a short term um, retention policy on premises or even potentially to tape after the fact it's hit disk first 
So we, we schedule that and that just looks like a normal backup copy job from that point. I think that's everything. Yeah, I just wanted to do a video really because um, so I could write a blog on this and show all of those cool, really simple, easy to use steps. But I just think a video is much easier for us to for us to consume. So with that, thanks guys.